Praise God, YouTube Christians, let's go. Listen, this is going to be the short version of last night's golden nugget out of the Word of God. <clears throat> Rapture is still days away. God is going to squeeze the trigger. Let's go. Okay, post-tribber, listen, post-tribbers, you should rejoice. If, a, if you are a post-tribber and you love the truth, and in your mind, you figured it out, you studied it, all you can come up with is it's a post-trib rapture. I studied it. This is all I got. You had to ignore Amos 518 through 20, uh, all the rest of the Bible that talks about pre-trib, Isaiah 57, 1 and 2, Micah 7, 1 and 2, uh, Revelation 3.10, Luke 21, 34 through 36. You know, you got to ignore all that, but you studied it out. Let me help you today and let's get right to it. <clears throat> Matthew 24, 29. This is your main post-trib verse. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, comma, from one end of heaven to the other. So this is your post-trib proof. You're a post-tribber, hardcore. You watch post-tribbers online. You read books about post-trib, blah, 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 blah. Listen, I just got a revelation now reading this. I kid you not. Look at this. Look at verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall... All, all, all the tribes of the earth mourn. All the nations of the earth. Okay, let's just look up the word tribes. I got the iPad out. Why not? Does it mean nations? What does it mean? Tribes, 5443. Four, the word is used 31 times. It means tribe. In the New Testament, all the persons descending from one of the 12 sons of the patriarch Jacob. It means a nation or people. So you could literally translate that, all the people of the earth mourned, all the nations of the earth mourned, okay? So just like I thought. <clears throat> this is incredible. So if we're about to be raptured, why would we be mourning? That's the revelation I just got. If we're about to be raptured and we see the Son of God, Jesus Christ, coming down, think about this. We're Christians. We just survived the seven-year tribulation. We just survived the horrors of hell, 21 judgments of God, the Antichrist, the mark of the beast, no water, no food, the sun scorching people. We survived seven years. We made it. We're looking up. Jesus is coming back. Look, the whole world went dark. It says, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. So we see the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. There's got to be millions of us, right? All the Christians who will be raptured. But that's not what it says. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from where? From the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. So it, we wouldn't be mourning. We'd be shouting for joy, praise God. All right, here we go. That's, that wasn't even the point. Verse 29, 
Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven. Now, this is the big mistake. People think that's demons falling from heaven. When we hear the word fall, we think fallen angel, okay? That word... It means to descend. I mean, technically, I don't have to look it up because I already did look it up. 4098 shall fall. This is a, a big word. It's used 90 times. It means to descend from a higher place to a lower place. So let's read it like that this time. 90 times it's used from a higher place to a lower place. So the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall descend from heaven, descend instead of fall. Do you see the difference there? Fall makes it sound like they fell, and people try to match it up with the sixth seal. So they didn't fall there, they descended. How do we know? Two verses later in 31, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet to gather up the elect. These are the angels descending with Christ. So quickly, if we go to Revelation 6, um, verse 12, and I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth even as a fig tree casts her untimely figs. Now get this, same type language. This is why people get it confused. When she is shaken of a mighty wind and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come and who is able to stand? Do you see? This is the sixth seal. This is about two years in when the stars fall from heaven. That's the result of Satan losing the war in Revelation 12. So this can all be deciphered. It's simple. Revelation 12, 7, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore. Where? In heaven. The stars fell from heaven and the great dragon was cast out. The stars were cast out. Six seal, what we just read. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world, he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Verse 13, and when the dragon saw that he was cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman, which brought forth the man child. So when Satan was cast to the earth, it's not at the second coming. He's already cast to the earth after the war in heaven about two years-ish, somewhere around there, which is the sixth seal. I mean, look what it says. And the stars of heaven fell to the earth, even as a fig tree casts her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind, all right? So now we can even match that up <clears throat> with Luke 21, 26, Men's hearts failing them. Why? Why are men having heart attacks? Men's hearts failing them for fear, for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. They were cast to the earth. They fell. Satan's clipped of his wings. They all are. They're grounded to the earth. So they still got angel powers, but they don't have flying powers. 
men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken, shaken like an untimely fig. This all matches up. It's all perfect. So Revelation 12, Revelation 6, Luke 21, 26 is not Matthew 24, okay? That's not what it is. So it's different. So Stan at the 1111 sign YouTube channel, he, he's got the rapture at the sixth seal. He thinks all the five seals have already been in play since the cross. It's wrong. Brenda Weltner, she thinks the sixth trumpet is going to be fulfilled in April of 2024. Just think about that. So listen, you got to be careful who you listen to. This is a perfect story. So I try to put it together perfectly. Doesn't mean I got it all right, but come on test this stuff and see if it lines up. So back to Matthew 24, 29. <clears throat> the moon will not give her light, which by the way, doesn't turn to blood. The sixth seal, it says it turns to blood. Right here, it just says it goes out, doesn't give its light. So again, similar language, but you gotta really pay attention to the details. The moon will not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven. So let's go back to this word, shall fall. Great word, I told you 90 times, right? It means to descend from a higher place to a lower place. Th these are the angels coming down with Christ. Look at the root word. The root word is five times. You know what the root word means? It means to fly, flying, to fly. So they're descending, but they're flying. So Angels can fly. We know this. Satan has already been clipped and cast to the ground. He's persecuting the woman. That's, you know, towards the middle of the tribulation. Matthew 24 is the second coming. And that's why you post-tribbers think, you, you know it's the second coming. You just think this is the rapture. I'm going to show you a million percent. It's not. If you can learn Learn something now, praise God, learn this. So, <clears throat> but I just wanted to touch on this word fall because it's so cool. So if I if I rip over to Psalm 9010, the root word is fly, flying. So descending from a higher to a lower place, the root word is to fly. I thought that was cool. So our Psalm 90 verse 10, where we get the length of a, of a generation. So Luke 21, 29 through 32, Jesus said, behold the fig tree, everything will be fulfilled before that last generation passes away. So Psalm 90, 10 says, the days of our year are three score years and 10, 70. If by reason of strength, God's strength in the Hebrew, they be 80 years, four score years, yet is their strength, their pride, their arrogance, it's labor and sorrow. Now get this, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Why do they fly away? Because it's cut off. Everything has to be fulfilled before the generation passes away. And the angels who can fly are literally doing the gathering. So look at that, it, it's all connected. And uh, real quick, let's do it. <clears throat> Daniel. I'm going to show you something that, that I stumbled on. Praise God. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which stands for the children of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered. Every one that shall be found written in the book. That's Daniel 12, 1. That is utter, complete gold. So at that time, Michael stands up, the children of your people, he stands for the children of your people, Israel. Michael's the archangel for Israel. There shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. Well, what does that sound like? That sounds like Jesus' words, does it not? 
back in Matthew 24. So we zip back to there, and Jesus says, 24, 21, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. So never a time like this, never will be a time like this. This is the worst. This is the great tribulation, the second half. That's when Michael stands up. And by the way, this root word fly is connected to all this. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So Revelation 4, 7 and I'm just ripping through here. Let's go. Praise God. All glory to God in his book. So look at this. Revelation 4, 7. And the first living creature was like a lion. And the second living creature was like a calf. And the third living creature had a face as a man. And the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. A flying eagle. That's, these are angels. These are the living creatures. These are the ones that are standing around the throne of God 24 7, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Praise God. So now look at Revelation, back to Revelation 12 14. So Revelation 12 13 was, and when the dragon saw that he was cast to the earth. Look at 14. And to the woman were given two wings. Two wings of a great eagle, a living creature. That's when Michael stood up. Michael guides him into the wilderness. Michael takes the remnant and brings them to maybe the mountains of Petra and all up in there. It's kind of speculation, but it's going to be Michael. The woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for time, times, and half a time from the face of the serpent. So Michael wins the war, right? The two, listen, Ross from New News thinks that war in heaven is going to be three and a half years. Satan and the angels come down at the midway point. I don't think they come down right at that point. It could be because the sixth seal is where they're kicked out of heaven. The sixth seal is not the midway point of the tribulation. So that's why I think my theory of a two-year war in heaven is better than his theory of a three-and-a-half-year war. So they come down right before the midway point and get things cooking to set up for the Antichrist to walk in the temple, abomination and desolation, the whole thing. But I thought this was cool that root word fly is attached to Michael, who's the archangel who can fly, who stands up for Israel. And there God says two wings like an eagle that brings them to the wilderness. Do you see all this? This is all perfect. Praise God. So that's Revelation 4, 7, Revelation 12, 14, Daniel 12, 1. And that word descend from a higher to a lower place is used 90 times in the New Testament. That made me instantly think of Psalm 90, 10. But then when I looked up the root word for fly, I knew Psalm 90, 10 said, and you're soon cut off and you fly away. So let's go back to our text here. So immediately after the tribulation of those days, sun shall be dark and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall descend from heaven and the powers of heaven be shaken. This is the second coming. And then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. They don't wanna see Jesus at the second coming. It's a judgment. People will die and be cast into the lake of fire instantly. Sheep, goats, the foolish virgins, all of it. And they might be able to not be invited to the feast and still make it on earth. I'm not sure. That's tricky, tricky language with the weeping and gnashing of teeth in outer darkness. So I said that on the live last night. If fiery furnace isn't connected to weeping, gnashing and teeth in outer darkness, it could be they still get to stay alive and not cast to hell. They just miss the wedding supper of the Lamb, praise God. So I'm not even positive about that. And that was the Chuck Missler idea. <clears throat> okay, the tribes of the nation, tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Here's the nugget. 
And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds. The four winds is always earth. Revelation 7, 1. The four angels held back the... Let's go to it. I'm not playing games. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Four angels holding back the four winds on the earth. So when we look here, we know it's an earth reference. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds of the earth. So all the elect will be brought before Christ. Now look what it says. From one end of heaven to the other. So this could be, some people think it's just a strict reference to us up in heaven, okay? So we're up in heaven, having the time of our life because we've already been raptured. The angels got to come gather us up. Hey, it's time, second coming. Hop on your white horses. We're going with the Lord back to the earth. It could be included in that, and I'm starting to think that it is. But it's more than that. The word heaven means the whole universe, the universe. This is the time that Abraham's bosom in the paradise side, in the heart of the earth, the paradise side called Abraham's bosom, all the Old Testament saints who are making it, this is the time they get pulled up in 2030 at the second coming and it matches up perfectly with Psalm 130, okay? Well, the Lord's got me going, so he must want me to read these because I'm turning to it. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Psalm 130, out of the depths have I cried to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? The Old Testament saints understood that we could never keep the law. We couldn't keep the 613 commandments. You're saved by forgiveness of sin, grace. <sighs> Praise God. If you, Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? But there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul does wait. And in his word do I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. They want their eternal bodies. They're waiting for the Lord. Yeah, they're in paradise, but they want to come up above earth, on the ground, into the kingdom. I say more than they that watch for the morning. Let Israel, Abraham's bosom, let Israel hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is plenteous redemption. This is Psalm 130. This matches up with 2030. And he, in the last line, verse eight, and he shall redeem Israel from all its iniquities. Praise God. The Old Testament saints believed in the coming Messiah who would forgive their sins. That's the key of David. David knew that you got saved by grace and not keeping the law. So all glory to God. Back to the text. He shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. They shall gather together his elect from the four winds. This is the wise virgins, all the Jews, all the, all the saved across the earth are going to be brought before Jesus Christ. And he's going to say in Matthew 25, I got to read it. I got to read it. <laughs> Lord, I love you. Matthew 25, 34. Then shall the king say to them on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. That means before the world ever started, God knew every single living soul, soul that was brought up from Abraham's bosom. Our souls will be there in the kingdom. He knew every single soul that would enter into the millennial reign of Christ, starting in 2031, which matches up with Rock Island Books calendar. He just doesn't know how all this uh, judgments and decipherings work. He's just on the timeline. So Psalm 131 confirms that 2031 is the start of the millennium. And God knew everybody that would go in because they were all pre-picked, hand-picked by God, found in the book of life. Praise God. 
Okay, I'm getting to it. I, I, I wanted to make this short and I can't help it. All glory to God. I hope you guys are enjoying this. Okay, gather the elect from the four winds and from one end of heaven to the other. This is the universe. So all the elect will be brought before Christ. And then ultimately, even the goat, the goat nations will be brought before Christ. It's Matthew 25. Remember, the ones on his left hand will go into everlasting lake of fire because they didn't give the brethren a drink of water. This is what's going on. And listen, I'm going to break down. I'm going to try to do Revelation one chapter at a time and see if we can stumble through it and glean some stuff out of there. I'm going to try to get to it before the rapture. Okay. Now here's what you got to see. Here's the nugget. I'm getting to it. Here we go. Okay. Praise God. I got to peek from the side to see if you guys can see this. I don't know if you can or not. Dear goodness. I'm no good with this. Okay, this word is 846. It's at the end of this. From one end of heaven to the other, period. There's one more Greek word here, G846. It's not translated. There's nothing there, okay? So I look at this word and think, what is this word? There's, there's nothing there. Why didn't King James translate this word? It's G846, it's a pronoun. It means himself, herself, themselves, he, she, it, the same. So I start digging this out and I start reading it. Pronoun derived from the particle. It's got two Greek letters with the added force of a demonstrative pronoun, period. In itself, it signifies nothing more than again. So when, when the Greek is set up like this, the word means again, okay? It signifies nothing more than again. Applied to what has either been previously mentioned, so saying again, I, I mentioned this, I'll mention it again, right? So nothing more than again, applied to what has either been previously mentioned or when the whole discourse is looked at, it must necessarily be supplied. So God supplied this Greek word because it was necessary because we're looking at the whole discourse. So when you look at the whole discourse and you read this, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other, again. And it's a pronoun that means himself. John 14 said, when I come again, I will receive you unto myself. So if that word would have been again, right from the start, shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other, again. In the discourse, when has this already been done? It's been done in the rapture. The rapture was already a gathering from the four winds. Listen, listen. And from heaven. I didn't say this on the live last night. It's just dawning on me now. The dead in Christ, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. The dead in Christ are up in heaven. So they're waiting for their bodies. So this literally is done again because it's not just the four winds the alive and remain, but it's the heavens. That's why post-tribbers think this is the rapture, and it's not. Dear God, praise God. God is saying again in the discourse, this was already done once. This is again when I received him to myself. This is a pronoun that means himself, herself, themselves, he, she, it, and it means again when you look at the discourse, this, this, this blows me away. This is it. There's no post-trib rapture. There's no mid-trib rapture. There's no pre-wrath rapture. It's pre-tribulation. It's already been done from the four winds and from one end of heaven to the other. So it's the dead in Christ that's up there having a blast. And then Jesus is going to say, it's time for the rapture. Let's go. 
and the dead in Christ come and they get their bodies first. This is amazing. Paul said in Thessalonians, he's bringing the dead in Christ with him. Oh man, all glory to God. Post Tribber, if you can't see this, it, it's right there. It, it's an untranslated word. So look in the Greek. This word, G846, is sitting on the end, untranslated. They didn't know what to do with it. They did if they would have just added again, his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other again. If that word again would have been there, we'd never have a debate over pre-trib, post-trib. It would be squashed again. Oh, he must have did it before. That's right. And before the tribulation started is when it happened before. Now the second coming, he's doing it again. Gathering the heaven, the four winds of the elect, and even Abraham's bosom is being pulled up. I don't know how much clearer I can make it. All glory to God. Praise God. Rapture still coming. Do not lose hope. Let's go.